All right, everyone. I just took a drink of water. Sorry about that. Welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I'm your host, Damon Pastalka, and I am so jacked. <coughs> Excuse me. With me today, I've got Brian Burke from Sell Your Mac. Brian, welcome. Hey, hey thanks for having me, Damon. Glad to be awesome. here and represent Brian the Mac Man. Talk to your audience and uh, hopefully share some uh, story and good tidbits they can learn from. I think it's going to be awesome, dude. You know, like we said when we were talking before this, I've I've heard you on with with uh, Ira Bowman and Joseph Stepke before, and it was just a hoot watching you guys. And and then as we started talking about having you on here, because of your business and what you're doing and stuff like that, I then I realized a lot of other cool stuff that maybe even want to talk with you more, which is which is just awesome. And I think it shows two things. It's the power of, of LinkedIn and the networking and how that can really allow you to meet interesting and, and quite honestly, just yeah. cool and fun people. And, uh, and then how, as we're going to talk about today, how enter entrepreneurship can really empower you to make positive change in the world. And, that was and, one of my and, biggest goals. I always wanted to give back as I've been growing this company. So I've been you know, handing out Max you know, from the beginning, just couldn't do quite as much back then and been fortunate enough to grow it over time. Yeah. And now we're giving that Max uh, very frequently. Yeah, that, that's just it's freaking awesome. So so first of all, let's, let's back up a ways and let's talk about your background because how the heck do you get into a business where you're going to be buying and, and selling Mac products? Well, I wasn't born of entrepreneurial blood, but I developed it pretty early. You know, I was doing sales on the sidewalk by age 10 and doing a lot of arbitrage sales in high school. I always had a knack for that. Love stock trading. Been buying, selling tech stocks uh, since I was a teenager. All right. And uh, it, in college, I started buying and selling a lot of my friends' cell phones. Everyone was too lazy to sell them on their own when they were upgrading. And yeah. I had, a, I had a, a lot of experience doing eBay. So I used that as my channel. And I was going around in the frats and the sororities that I knew and yeah. collecting their phones on a you know, monthly basis. And I made a little business out of it uh, to make some wow. you know, side income during college. Yeah. yeah. So after well, college, I just basically started an eBay company buying Apple products and technology, cell phones, everything. And I quickly kind of pivoted to focus on Apple. That's my true passion. So, yeah, I've been doing all Apple since about 2008 when the iPhone launched. Wow. So, so I didn't even realize this until we started talking. So you've been on B eBay a long time. Is that one of your main sales channels right now? It still is. Unbelievable. We're able to sell so many Apple products on eBay. <laughs> That's freaking awesome, dude. Because I this is yeah. this is why I love having these conversations because you know a lot of my work is in e-commerce and obviously eBay is that too. And it's just interesting yeah. how it intertwines with so many businesses. So when you're when you're doing this, so you started out, let's back up first of all, because you said you said in high school you were doing arbitrage. So what are, what were you buying and reselling in high school? I always think of that. That's kind of a lot of car parts. And I, a lot of times I didn't touch them. I would buy them online and just blind ship them to someone on the forum and I'd sell them to. Really? Cause I, that's, that's, oh, yeah. that's, it's so interesting because you know, I'm a bit older than you and those kind of opportunities were not really there for us at that, at, in, at my age. And it's interesting. That's my true. son's got friends, my friends got, my son's got friends that he was a big uh, car buff in high school and he would do the same thing. He would buy car parts that he knew were for certain kinds of Subarus and he would yep. buy them, refurbish them and resell them. And he, he paid for a lot of his college doing that. Nice little healthy business there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. So one, thing I, one thing I want to tell people is you got to be passionate about it. You know, yeah. I loved Audi cars at the time. So that's why I picked it and I knew about it. And the reason yeah. I've been, you know, done well and been successful in my current business is I'm so passionate about Apple that I'm learning and reading about it every day so I can be able to be knowledgeable about it and, you know, learn, learn why I should be doing certain things or not. Yeah. Yeah. Because for people that don't know, I mean, you, you've sold, you've bought over $44 million worth of Apple products and you're in the top 1% in your industry of, of Apple product resellers, correct? 
Yeah, definitely are. We're definitely one of the top in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, we're certainly number one when it comes to service and support. If you look at any of their ratings, uh, we do rank number one in the world, you know, so we say that we're the most trusted <laughs> Apple trade-in partner. Awesome, dude. That's great. And, you know, it, it, like you said, it's- Shout out to my Mac. team for that at Sawyer Mac. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You're, it's it's not a one-person one person deal, but no. it, start, it starts with your passion about when you look at what you were doing back early in your- you said from age on, 10 on doing that and learning it. And then ultimately, as you were in college, seeing that opportunity and then just developing yeah. it further as you got out. That's so cool. Because well, funny, actually, I wanted to get a job when I graduated college in finance and I was on trying to get a job on Wall Street for about a month and didn't get what I was looking for. So I just yeah. came home and started my eBay business. So I kind of fell into it. Wow. Wow. So, and, and so that was... What what year was that? Two thousand six. So that that's like, I'm thinking back in time. In time, that's early e-commerce kind of time frame, though, really, because eBay was one of the early ones, obviously. Yeah, they've they, been around for a little while, but yeah, not everyone it, knew about e-commerce yeah. back then. No, no one was running Shopify stores and whatnot. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Shopify was a was a dream to be at that point, but that's there cool. wasn't so, much competition. There weren't many Apple trading sites. You know, we were one of the the very few out there that were trusted at the time. Yeah, wow, that's cool. So, what have you seen? I mean, so. This kind of this kind of changes things a little bit, and we'll talk about this part of your business a little bit later because I do want to talk about some of the other stuff that you do, and it's it's cool to hear your background it's, and and where we're at today with your business, but let's talk a little bit about some some of your your hobbies. You're a wine sommelier, so tell me what it takes. I to love do that. wine. <laughs> All right, I've been passionate about wine my whole life, and decided I should learn more, and you know get a certification, I guess you could say. Yeah. I'm a level one sommelier in the uh, court of master sommeliers. So basically you need to learn a lot about it and you go take a yeah. test. They give the test, you know, once a month in a different state. So I waited till it came to Cincinnati and I, I studied for about three months and I passed the test. Wow. It was, it's pretty funny. I was in a room of all these people, at, you know, from these super fine dining restaurants and some yeah. of them know me and they're like, why are you here? You're the computer guy. <laughs> Yeah, because I like it. So what, exactly. what, what did that teach you about wine, studying for that, that you'd never really understood before that? Because you liked wine before that, obviously. But what, what do you think yeah. were the things that think, it taught you? I think a lot of it's using the right words to describe it. And it, it helps with the enjoyment of it. When you can run through your head and really think about the wine at a deeper level, you know, the different characteristics of it and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you actually can remember it better. So when you go to look for wine in the future, you can speak to it, you know, when you're at a restaurant or at a wine store, you can tell them exactly what you're looking for, for any certain type of wine. And that's, I find that very helpful because most of those people are extremely knowledgeable as well. And they can yeah. usually give you good feedback on something that you'll also enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I enjoy wine, but I, I could not explain why I enjoy it. And I think that's a, that's a really cool thing that you learned is. Yeah how to explain specifically why you enjoy this particular wine. So, I have a good tip for you then. One of my uh, friends on LinkedIn, Nicholas, he launched a business called The Palate Club and you can blind taste his wines and from there you rate them on his app and their oh, algorithm wow. will tell you what wines you'll enjoy. And if you don't like the wines, they're, they're simply free. Oh, so wow. they guarantee you like the wine. So what's Nicholas's last name? So I can write that down. It's really hard to say. I'm happy to send it to you. And, and good, good. Notes. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So I understand I to hard to it. say. I understand hard to say with Pastalka as a last name. It's been mispronounced a few times. So yeah, I don't want to say your name either. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. Though, call you Damon I, P. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They actually they do. They do. So the that's that's awesome though, because I never thought about that as as part of what you would learn going through that process. Because you know, even my wife and I talking about wines, she talks about them, and and I kind of understand, but I really don't understand. But I know what I like. 
So I mean, you're in the same camp as most people. I think the average yeah, yeah. person just says, you know, I really enjoy wine that's fruity and red or, you know, mm-hmm. you know dry, dry rosé and you know, terms yeah. like that. But once you can describe yeah. it deeper, you'll find more enjoyment out of it, too. And it really yeah. helps at dinner parties. Oh, no doubt. You know, no uh, doubt. A wine dinner party. It's fun to be a little, little knowledgeable and give a little history. Exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, that's that was kind of a side note because I saw that. I was like, well, you know, what's it take to do it? And what do you really learn from it? But that's that's interesting to know. And I'm sure a lot of people appreciate understanding that because it is it is a uh, yeah. at least a hobby for a lot of people and uh and a passion i mean we we do we're i'm fortunate living in the pacific northwest we've got the willamette valley and we've got actually oh, now they're, they're man, moving so out many good oregon wines up there and the washington yeah. wines are amazing yeah. yep and you know we we go to walla walla once in a while and go down in, and i've actually had clients that were winemakers so so it's a uh, um it's close to what i do obviously have and you so had the k k Syrah from walla walla yes i have so I have. good yeah, yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, and there, I, I know you want to get in some of the charitable stuff I'm doing later. And I also wanted to mention I do do charitable wine tastings. There we go. Um, I started a business called Party Psalm so I can help people, you know, pair wines for their dinner parties and their events. But I'm also very passionate about doing some of these charitable events. Nice. And uh, fortunately, uh, none during COVID. But before yeah, yeah. that, did a few, and yeah, you can raise a lot of money and have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, so that's awesome. So, so if people want to talk to talk to you about charitable wine tasting in the Cincinnati area, that's that we just need to make sure to bring that up here so they can talk to you. There you go. I do that. virtual wine tastings too. <laughs> oh, there you go. You can do that virtual as well. Oh yeah, I never that you could do it just easy that way too. Awesome. We could have a glass of wine right now. You know. Yeah, yeah, we could. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. So that's that's great to know. And and when we were talking about this, and and I was researching more, you did a TEDx talk earlier this year, correct? Yeah, it was the end of last year down in Atlanta. The end of last year, you did it. So tell me a little bit about the TEDx process and why you wanted to do a talk, a TEDx talk. Well, the process was I have absolutely loved TED Talks my entire life. So I've been very intrigued by the amount of knowledge that these people share. And I actually made it a goal of mine to do a TEDx talk at the beginning of the year. And I thought the best topic would be around gifting Apple computers. So I kind of put the vibe out there to some people I knew. And through some connections, I was able to get an opportunity to audition. Um for a couple of different cities, the Cincinnati one, I did not get selected for, but I made it yeah. to the Atlanta one. So that was super cool. And man, the amount of prep I did before our TEDx talk, it was the most nerve wracking experience of my entire life. Really? I did no prep to talk to you today. I can go on any podcast and just yeah. have, have at it. But this TED talk was another level. Uh, so you have practice for weeks. And, uh, you know, delivered a very passionate talk on stage down there to a very small audience you know, due to COVID. Yeah. Uh, but it was really fun. I would definitely do it again. And I wanted to get my message out there to the world. And I felt that the TED platform really legitimized it because it is so hard to be a, a TED or a TEDx yeah. speaker. Yeah. That, that would, you know, then allow me to share that with people that would, um, you know, respect what I was doing and, you know, see it as a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I don't, I didn't write down the number of views, but if I remember right, you got a fair amount of views on it. So, so hopefully that, that at least on YouTube anyway, start, and, starting to spread the message on there. You know, yeah. I can get more views in a LinkedIn post though. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the way it is, but um, so you've, you, you're give, gifting computers. I, I think this is a cool way that, and, and if people haven't listened to your TED Talks, go on YouTube, look up Brian Burke, TEDx, and you will listen, you will yep. hear what I'm saying. It's very passionate. I'm, and I'm going to probably choke up just talking about I feel like I was it. shouting with passion that thing. I mean, I was Well, exploding. you were, you were. And, and I mean, know. If there's, if there's one the, thing. The, the, and two, I, the two things we do to gift Max, you either can send Max directly to us and we'll gift them. And, or you can just use our uh, promo code trading yep. for a purpose and we'll add $20 to the pool of funds we use to gift Max. 
So that's a really easy way that you can trade in your Mac and get paid and do nice. good all at the same time. That's nice. what we call it trading for a purpose. So, so if people wanted to just send their Mac to you to gift, they can do that. And, yeah. and yep. if they want to donate, they can do that. And you've got it set up online so you can do that real easy. Yeah, I just make it make really sure easy for them. I'm going to make sure everybody's clear. So go to sellyourmac.com, donate your Mac products, your Apple products, your old iPhones. That That's still, you know, all oh, that I'd stuff. Love to help. You want to give it away, then do it at sellyourmac.com. And there's an easy way to donate your products there and it will be given to someone that can use them because listen to your, listening to your Ted talk and this is where it really is going to hit me, but I'll try to get through it. You take these products and you give them to kids that are underserved kids that need these. They probably don't have a computer, probably don't think they're going to get a computer. And it's their first are, device. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's so cool because when we're sitting here today, you and I are talking, we've got wonderful computer products around us and we're, we're, yeah. we're blessed, blessed. There's a lot of kids that aren't, and there's a lot of families that aren't. And those are the kind of people that, that by what you're doing, that piece of technology, that device is, is something that can make the difference. It can literally make the difference to open the internet that, up. That's to the story. That one that one device to change the world. You you never know what someone's going to do with it. They can yeah. become you know future robotics you know astronaut launching these people to the to the stars. You know they could be creating a new yeah. company. You know be a LinkedIn influencer. You know, you don't know until you have the products to help you get there. Yeah, yeah. I, I just it it just, it just it gets me, man, because. This is this is really literally something that opens the world up to them and it might yeah. give them that spark to think I can do whatever I want to do because they can, they can, and and give them those opportunities and putting that in their hands to, to that seed. A lot of these kids really do need that spark to get ignited. You know, one yeah. of the charities that I'm on the board of called Adopt the Class here in Cincinnati, we talk about giving these kids the spark to ignite them and it's showing them different ways of business. It's like a group business mentoring we do with students. And a lot of times they don't even understand that you can have all these different careers. They don't see it. They yeah. only see what's going on in their neighborhood, which isn't good. Yeah. And, you know, they think the next thing to do is to be a drug dealer or an NBA star. And, you know, fortunately, neither one's going to work. Yeah. 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 That's that's awesome. Well, I just want to say a quick shout out to Sam Gupta. Hey, Sam, how's it going today? Hey, Glad. Sam. Glad that you're on today and, and appreciate you listening. Um, if anyone else is listening to that wants to drop their, their, where they're listening from in the comments, drop something for Brian. Oh, give us a shout out. Or, or just go right to sellyourmac.com and ship them your Apple products so he can give it away. You're going to listen to more about how he's giving this away and making oh, a nice. difference in kids' lives. We want to make sure that we get that out to as many people as we can, because dude, it is cool as hell. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to use kind of bad language in it, but I'm got, but it is, it is cool what you're doing because it, I can't tell you, man, because I, I think about myself and I didn't grow up in a horrible environment nearly. I was blessed in a lot of ways. Uh, I didn't yep. have a family. I, I grew up on a farm in the Midwest and, and my family did not know much about business. They knew about farming. Right. And I look at that in my career and how much people are different that grew up in business and then went into business comparatively having that early influence of it um, for these kids and having that technology early is so critical because if you look at the, if the you can't miss that, them, then it's, yeah, it's too late kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got to you you get in their hands early enough. Yeah, because if you're if you're too old, I mean, because I look at my nephews and stuff that are, you know, they're 10, 12 years old and they've had a they've had an iPad in their hand forever. You know, they're they know technology. Stage four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They know technology. They know how to getting on the Internet, finding the YouTube videos or learning about stuff online and what they can do. Build, you know, just from a simple standpoint of, of a kid being able to do one of those on YouTube and Google. Yeah. Just you go, just research stuff for a school project. It's, ah, oh, man, it's, it's phenomenal. So well, what, I mean, I, I love hearing the stories about, you know, these kids and how they're putting them to use and you know, just, just hearing how some of these people, you know, couldn't had to go to the library or write a paper before and stuff like that. And how, how trying that is on them. You, you 
you can't do as good of a work because it's almost too much effort to, you know, spend enough time there. Yeah. So I guess really, really is the tools help, help unlock, you know, their capabilities. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're right, because I, I never even really thought about that aspect of it, though, too, because now if they don't have the device, they still need to write the papers. They still have to go to the to the yeah. library to do it or or stay after school and do it there. So it's you can uh, live in the Midwest or Northeast and it's snowing, you know, no. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Well, I Where'd think you grew too, up in the, the Midwest, South Dakota, South Dakota. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I was. West? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up. So people think people think they, they grew up in the country. I grew up 60 miles from the nearest Walmart. So that's that's how far in the country I was. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But it's but, but you serious. know, there's there's a lot of things that 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 were good about it, too. And and uh, but well, you this, learned hard work, right? Growing up on a farm. I mean, there's no slacking oh, yeah. off. It's every day at 4 a.m., right? Yeah. Not uh, not that early, but it but it was good. It was good. <laughs> from that standpoint, it was it was it was good. Um and uh, there are a lot of different things. So what, what you've been in business a while now, you know, you got 12 years, 13 years now with your business, close to 14. What, what really have you learned over time that's been kind of this consistent thing through business? It's like, if I focus on this, it will, it will drive success in the long run. For me, it's passion and perseverance. You know, there's been so many times that I have <laughs> hit a wall mentally or physically. If I wasn't passionate, it'd be so hard to push through. And having that perseverance to fight in the worst of times, you yeah. know, when you think you're going to go bankrupt or yep. you have a huge legal issue or some employee burns you. Um, I mean, there's just been crazy times. I mean, we, we got hit with a quarter million dollar fraud one time and I had a oh. battle back with, you know, no money. That's, it was the first three, four years of my business. That is everything that I made and I lost yeah. it all overnight. Yeah. And if I didn't have, um, the passion, I mean, I probably would just have folded, you know, obviously I had you know, friends and family yeah. help, you know, rally yeah. behind me to, you know, keep me going. But it's that, it's that mindset that, you know, keeps you top of your game every day and yeah. lets you kind of work around the clock. I you know, I don't work quite the hours I used to anymore, yeah. but I used to be 14 to 16 hour days, yeah. like six, seven years. And that it is hard work. There's the key to success that, you know, there isn't, you know, these one hour people that say that you can work, you know, four hour weeks. I mean, yeah, there's businesses. It's possible to do that, but that's not normal. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a grind. And if you yeah. don't have the battery in you to keep it going, probably going to fail ultimately. So that's yeah. how we've been able to stay around so long. That's awesome because you, you hit two things and it was not rehearsed. The passion and per per perseverance. I talk about those two things a lot in, in my posts and in my own life. I think that because it is when you look about it, I always think that if you're going to do something as an entrepreneur, you better be passionate. Because it's going to oh, take, yeah. every, like you said, it's going to take a grind. It's going to take you getting out of bed when you feel like there's no damn way I want to get out of bed. Or not bed. going to bed. More yeah, or not going to bed. There you go. 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, because I got to get this done. And, and, yeah. and you just got to persevere when you're getting kicked in the teeth like you talked about it. And because you know what you're doing is right and you know what you're doing is is your calling and what you should be doing. And yeah, uh, exactly, I, I think that is great advice. And I hope people listen and take that in deep because I so many times we see people that I'm going to go out and be an entrepreneur or in in our culture now. It's a lot not of for things, everyone. If you're not, no, it's not. Don't have the don't have the bandwidth. It's not going to be good then. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. It, it, that I'm glad you said that because it's not for everyone. And and even when we, you know, we see some startup companies and we see other people and, and you look about the angel community where they're getting funded by investors or, or VC back firms. And, and I, I do get to talk to a fair amount of those people. And some of those people drastically underestimate the effort it's going to be even with money. 
And that's the thing well, is it's even it's harder good. and you have the money then now you got to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not like bootstrapping. You bootstrapped your company, I'm sure. And, and when you're bootstrapping, it's your yeah. money. But when you when you add an investor's money into it, you add a, another level of complexity because you're they're they're essentially riding on you to make sure yeah. that that, you know, to to hopefully grow their investment. And it adds to the pressure of that. So, um, yeah. I have I have no outside investors, but my leadership yeah, yeah. team and my uh, board of advisors helps push me. Yeah. But yeah, definitely inter the internal drive is what's needed. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And that's good. So when you see the Apple products now, this is so. So you've been in 2008. What was the cool Apple product in 2008? The right? iPhone. iPhone one. It just launched. Right. Oh my right. goodness! Right over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the iPhone one. I mean, wow. Now the the it's iPhone hard to, one. It's hard to believe that was 12 years ago. Well, I know, because I, I I actually use I actually I use the iPhone as an example in I do talks on the changing demographics of buyers in manufacturing because the the mm -hmm. the fallacy by many manufacturing executives, people that got the gray hair like I do, they think that, you know, they need their salespeople out on the road and selling like that and out and meeting people. But one of the things that a lot of them forget is that the buyers today grew up with that iPhone in their hand and they don't want to do yeah. like the buyers of my day when I was, when I was selling and out in the field doing that, where you did, they couldn't find you. You had to call them and try to solve right. their problems that way and go meet with them now the whole now they process, want to text yeah exactly well yeah <laughs> that's even that's even weirder right that's that's still i i text for business to me is still and it shows my age it's still kind of like well i do it but but the 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 in my field everyone about, wants to whatsapp and i i don't really whatsapp but yep it seems like yep. everyone's to go in that direction in the uh you know, it business ah you're right you're right and then it's just, there's a lot of other things. And, and that is what I think we really as, as humans need to understand is when you were talking about from in 2008, that person today, if, if they were 16 years old is 30 years old now or close to it. Uh, yep. That person is a decision maker in a lot of companies now. They're not the entry yeah. level person anymore. They're 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 decision makers, and that person is, as you mentioned, they're used to the iPhone. They're used to information at, at their at their fingertips and being able to yep. move much farther down the buying process than the the generation before, where they're used to more of the the sellers come to them, not they go yep. to the sellers, and. It's amazing how that iPhone. I think really, COVID helped kind of push everyone in that direction. Yeah, I mean, you it, it, it really has. You, you kind of had to pivot or pivot or fail. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, you starting off in eBay like you did, you bypassed that for the vast majority of what you do because it's you know the e-commerce e platform and starting that early and the type of products you sell. That's that's a great way to do that. So. It's crazy. But, We're still on eBay. It's still working, but we have our know. own store now too. We, we also sell on renewedmax.com. Okay. That's awesome then. Cause it is, that's one of the things that we see in a lot of e-commerce clients is kind of their, their maturation journey is they'll start out yeah. on a platform. They can be on Amazon or Walmart or wherever, wherever it is. It's, there's so many platforms now, but they eventually, when you can move back to your own website and control a portion of your own loyal customers. Exactly. You start to drive that brand recognition, that brand loyalty, and you can build that community. That's where you can, you know, those are more valuable for the long run for you. The other ones are great. They're great customers. I, I like controlling the customer experience as much as we can. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's cool that you're doing that. And so, now we're moving into, uh, so where do you think, uh, we're, we're sitting here now, I've got, what the, the, what's this? It's an 11 something with the three cameras on it. But, uh, oh yeah, there you go. So so what what do you think is new? You're still on the 11? What are you doing, Damon? We gotta, we gotta get you on the 12th. Yeah, I'm old, I don't care. 
I mean, mine does, but I, I upgraded from Android. I told you this when we got on, man. I was an Android. All right, then you're fan. fine. Keep the 11. You're good. Yeah, no yeah. See, this is my first step <laughs> into it. So, um, but I honestly, I, but honestly, I, I, I came from more of an IT techie background and, and a lot of the stuff that we, we had to do and some apps were not actually available on the Apple. Yep. When I, yeah. when I was back and doing a lot of that stuff and I just stayed with the Android, but really the reason I switched to Apple is because my parents, mm -hmm. I wanted to video call with my parents during COVID. Oh, yeah. They couldn't figure it out. It's so much easier on the iPhone. <laughs> exactly. So I, so I just, I basically threw my Android in the drawer, went and bought an iPhone and, and now we're, you know, FaceTiming on my mom's tablet and an iPad and I away we it. go. And that's what I think if Apple has done one thing right, they make the connectivity so much easier. It's easy know. for everyone to use. I mean, the little kids, the grandparents, yeah. it really doesn't matter. I mean, I don't think I can give my kid an Android phone and tell them how to call someone. I can give my uh, two-year-old an iPad and she can, she can call her grandpa. <laughs> good, good point. You are, you are correct it's there. Pretty, it's pretty fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think has been one of the coolest things that you, by, by being so close to that technology, what do you think one of the coolest things is about what you do? What am I enjoying more, most about the Apple products? Yeah. Your question? Yeah. About just being that close to that technology all the time and, and, and seeing it. What, I think, what think for me is being able to use it. I mean, I am on my phone all the time. So I'm also taking photos all the time. I love yeah. taking photos of my family food, wine, whatever it is, and being able to capture all those memories on the latest devices is really important to me. Uh, so, you know, I'm very fortunate that I can upgrade, you know, every product cycle because that's part of my business. Yeah. But by staying on that forefront of the technology, my devices are, you know, as fast as possible and also, you know, taking the best photos, which I care more about than almost anything else. Yeah. So that's always been fun for me. I got 80,000 photos on my phone, I think. <laughs> yeah, my wife, my, it's so funny you're talking about that because my wife and I were talking about it last night and she goes, wow, you've only got, I don't know, I don't even know what the number was that I've got on mine and she was in the thousands, you know, so I think that is one of the things that's really cool. I'm just looking real quick. You don't quick take a lot of pictures then. <laughs> I, I do. I take uh, what I think is a lot of pictures and, and people look at me uh, because they think I'm funny, but I started on Google Maps many years ago, taking pictures of places that I'm at and uploading them on Google yeah. Maps. And for whatever That's reason, fun. I've, yeah, it is. And I've got like 20 plus million views of my photos on Google Maps, which I wow. don't know if it's a lot or not, but, but it just keeps building over time and I could do it kind of like fun. So I do take a lot of pictures, but not, I guess not as Google of, reviews. Is that how you do it? Oh yeah, I do Google reviews, but I just, but on Google, you can just upload pictures too. You just place. Do, okay. Cause it's it. geotagged, right? Everything's geotagged or you have yeah. to adjust a little bit. You put in where you're at and, sure. and, it, and it's oh, really Google fun. Google knows where you are. Yeah, it knows <laughs> and all the time. And people talk it about turning that, turn that stuff off. I'm like, even if oh. you turn it off, it doesn't do you any good. So I don't think it matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got. Uh, I had to look at my other thing, but uh, Denrick is on here. Thanks, Denrick, for for uh, weighing in here. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate your 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 feedback and thanks for saying and, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. But um, yeah, I think that the the iPhone, when you think about what it did to bring in, just as you said, the camera into your hand, the video camera, the still shots, yeah. and, and you think about how that has changed the, the amount of pictures we take, the type of pictures we take. Oh, I can't way. imagine trying to edit, you know, edit photos after I got them on a camera roll from 20 years ago. I mean, that's yeah. unheard of. Yeah. And now I edit my pictures in, you know, three seconds to make them look amazing. So yeah, it's, Really fun. You couldn't geotag on a, you know, Polaroid. <laughs> no, no. Well, and, and I'm, I'm just thinking about normal everyday situations. Like you, you've got younger children. And if your younger children are sitting there doing something cute, the first thing you do is pull your phone out, snap a picture of it because you want to remember that, right? And years, years ago, even when it was digital cameras, that camera was someplace else and you didn't have that opportunity. And it's, oh it's man, just, just these girls today. I'm getting my, Little kids, you know, one yeah. sticks another one's hair. <laughs> See, it's, it's, yeah, it. it's like that. And then you look at the the ease <laughs> the ease that Apple made that for people. 
to upload to the cloud and save those and share those photos yep. across all your Apple devices. You got to commend them for it, whether you like the Apple ecosystem or not, because they change the way we Seamless. look at documenting our lives. And, really do. and it, it really is something. It really is something. So, I have to pay to develop my 70,000, 80,000 photos. I'm not sure what that would cost. It would not be fun. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. So it, it's, it's just been incredible getting to know you a little bit better, Brian. And if there's, I, I want to let you kind of explain to people if there's one more thing point you could leave with them before we finish up um, about your philanthropic or how they can help like that or Apple or anything. I just like you to share your thoughts there. Well, from a business side, I would love to help everyone, you know, buy and sell their Apple products. So definitely check yep. us out at sellyourmac.com. And you can use my personal promo code MACMAN. That'll give you a bonus if you're selling or a discount if you're buying. Nice. And I want everyone to follow their passion. So find your passion, focus on doing that. It'll make you much happier in life and you'll be way more successful when you've truly found your passion. Oh man, that's awesome. And I would I just want to go back in this one more time before we get off. Go to sellyourmac.com. You can donate your Apple products so that Brian can gift them to a, a deserving yep. young person to help them get a better start in life. And man, if you can do Thank that, you. I just want to say sellyourmac.com, donate your Apple products. So Brian can can get them ready to go and give them to deserving young people. Business owners, surf kids have a better life, and I think this is one of the best ways we can do it. So I really appreciate all the support; it means a lot. Yeah, yeah, because I I just think it's it's an awesome cause, dude, and and I'm just I'm so glad that we could talk about this a little bit more. We're gonna donate a Mac tomorrow. <laughs> awesome, Michael Ray Even from better. LinkedIn's coming to Cincinnati, yeah. and we are gonna make some kid have an amazing day. Awesome, awesome. And, and another thing I saw, and I, I, I hate to digress, but recently, you know, you, you are trade, your trademark is the, is the blue jacket and the blue bow tie. I can't and help I, it. I'm yeah. all blue head to toe, baby. Yep. And I, <laughs> I think, I think you are, you actually put a jacket up for auction here. If I remember that you're, you were auctioning one off for charity. And so, so that's, if, if people I have, raised if, $500, <laughs> I'm giving away one of my blue suits. <laughs> Awesome. awesome. You know, I had five. I figured I only need four. We'll be okay. Exactly. I was picking them out to lots of trade shows. This is a perfect time to donate one and raise some money. Yes. That's so awesome. I, I, I'm glad I remembered that and we could, we Thanks could talk for following about it. That. But I mean, it's, it fun. is. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. It's, it's fun. It's, it's fun. And you know, I, I can see your passion for helping people. And again, if you haven't seen Brian's TEDx talk, get on YouTube, Brian Burke TEDx. It'll come up. You'll notice the blue jacket. Listen to it. You will get you inspired. In the blue bow tie. Yeah, you can't. You can't. And, and, and the passion behind your, behind your uh, speech there is, is incredible. Thank you so much for being here today, Brian. Thank you. You Dan. are, you are helping. Yeah, I, I just, I, I just, I'm just gushing because I, I just, I'm so happy that I could have you on and, and you're helping kids in ways that makes a difference. Well, thank you for highlighting that because I know we're going to get at least a few more trainings that we can donate just, just from this talk and podcast. So that makes me very happy. Yes. If I could get one, it'll be freaking a good day for me. Let's do one. <laughs> Change some kids yeah. life. You bet. Well, everybody, thanks so much. Thanks, Brian, for being here. We will have Brian's contact information in the comments on this, the show notes on YouTube, on our blog, every place else on the podcast. Also, don't forget to donate your Apple products at sellyourmac.com and Brian will refurbish them and give them to a deserving young person that will use them. You can help to make their lives better. So thanks again. Can't wait to help. You bet, everybody. This is this is Damon Pasalka with the Faces of Business. We will talk soon. Oh, I got to highlight this one last thing. Brian is an amazing human. I can't see who it is, but I'm sure it's someone we know. Thanks so Thank much you, for the everyone. comment. You bet. And we're going to be out until 30.